Hi, this is Eileen Asher with another episode of Artists with Anxiety. I am here with Michael Halliday at the uh, 400 West Ridge Studios. Uh, we're just outside his studio. You'll see some uh, pictures and video footage of the inside, so uh, be on the lookout for that. But I'll let him introduce yourself. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and like what kind of a uh, creative are you? Hi, my name is Michael Halliday, as you just said, and uh, I'm a uh, painter. Uh, studied at Ohio State University a long time ago and uh, uh, managed eventually to uh, include painting in my daily life after many years of working uh, numerous types of jobs. Um, I have my studio here at 400, as uh, Eileen said, and uh, uh, I've been here uh, nine years by my calculation, and uh, I've shown reasonably widely in central Ohio and uh, like to think that uh, I'm uh, recognized as one of the uh, better landscape, uh, better landscape, better abstract painters <laughs> in, uh, in Columbus, but uh, mm -hmm. one never knows. Uh, sales are down. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough economy. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so um, again, and talked to you about this before, but only kind of reveal what you're um, comfortable with, but what kind of mental health issues have you been uh, struggling with? Uh, primarily uh, depression, some anxiety, but mostly depression. I was diagnosed when I was still in high school with clinical depression, and I've uh, dealt with that off and on throughout my life. Uh, a number of different therapists, a number of from different medications, um, reach a plateau, you know, but you never really, uh, at least I haven't ever really become a happy-go-lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I have bouts of depression uh, that are worse periods of time than others, but uh, uh, when my wife died in 2008, uh, I became severely depressed, and uh, I was lucky to survive that event. Uh, mm -hmm. But in any case, uh, I'm still here, and uh, as depressed as ever. What can I say? <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't go away necessarily, but no, you know, just keep no, it doesn't dealing with it. You have to manage it as best you can. And sometimes I manage it better than others. Well, well, that I guess that leads it leads into my next question of how do you how do you deal with it on the bad days when you you know you need to be in here, you know you need to be working, but you can't manage to do it. Do you take a break? Do you just, you know, essentially suck it up and go in? Or how do you handle moments like that? If I follow my own advice, I show up. And, <laughs> and, uh, uh, one of my therapists, uh, uh, I can't remember the type of therapist he was. He wasn't a straight out shrink. Uh, but uh, he said, uh, motivation will follow action. And uh, so in previous times when I've talked to groups at the cultural center or I've stressed the importance of showing up and now I need to follow my own device, advice uh, and uh, try and try and be here more. I've, I've got some things going on in my life uh, uh, dealing with mom. For mom passed a couple of years ago and uh, I had kind of California furniture, and now it's all in one place, and I'm, so I'm kind of stressed about getting the house uh, organized mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and my, put my uh, thumbprint on it. Uh, and that has affected the number of hours I've been able to work, but uh, I have noticed that in the last oh, six months or so that I've been a little more depressed and anxious about the, the future. Whether or not I was washed up as a painter. <laughs> I highly doubt that, and you will see why. But <laughs> absolutely highly doubt that. Um, so then, can you tell me about a time when you were you had to mentally fight to be creative? And then what was the result of that? If you let yourself or force yourself to work, frequently good things can come out of difficult times. Um, I started painting again in 2010 after I was able to steady my ship enough uh, and I had circumstances 
where I lived, uh, there was a barn, and uh, so I was able to set up a studio in the barn, and uh, I, I credit painting with saving my life. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, some of my strongest work, the piece that's in the lobby of the Hilton, was my second painting. Oh, and wow. It was very, uh, it was a very strong, powerful painting, and uh, you know, emotion can uh, heighten. I don't know if it heightens our creativity exactly, but it seems like uh, there's something in us that has to get out, mm -hmm. and it comes out in color and, and uh, you know, yeah, shapes. So. <laughs> um, I'm, I mean, I'm glad to hear that you managed to put out the products and you can see the fruits of your labor at the Hilton and, and then in the halls here yes. is wonderful. Um, so then how... Um, I'm losing my spot. My goodness. <laughs> so then, how do you how do you cope with the issues? Um, like, how do you cope with those kinds of episodes? Um, I talk a lot about self care. Um, I like to take naps. I know I've had previous guests that actually have a uh, cognitive like a cognitive routine that they mm -hmm. walk themselves and talk themselves through um, about a, like a bad mental state. So, what kind of steps do you take when you feel that you're feeling you're having an episode or you feel like you're being you're significantly down sometimes i deal with it in a positive way sometimes i, I have a favorite chair at home and i just sit in my chair and uh, veg out and uh, mm -hmm. uh, distract myself in any way i can um, sometimes you know it can it takes you to dark places of depression uh, mm -hmm get that sense of hopelessness once in a while and uh, you, you know you wonder what's the point uh, um, and those are still difficult times for me to get through I don't have a panacea uh, to offer to anyone uh, I think that uh, that other therapist I referred was referring to was a cognitive therapist mm -hmm. and uh, there are things you can do I've I've been very remiss and uh, perhaps doing things that might benefit me or routines or, or uh, you know, uh, self-talk like you were mentioning. Mm -hmm. uh, I just uh, suffer through it. I try to, try to be active uh, as much as possible and, and just to get some things done so, you know, you don't feel like you've lost the day of your life. Just to sitting in a chair being depressed, but uh, mm -hmm. doing the dishes, I mean, just laundry, anything around the house that something uh, just to have to say I got something done. That oh, day. yeah, yeah, I definitely I do that. That helps me either like um, cleaning and like you're talking about. If I get like one thing done off my checklist, I don't feel like it was a total waste, so right. I still am not the only one who does no. that. Um, and then, uh, so then we talk about getting proper treatment for a lot of the different um, mental illnesses, and you mentioned therapy a couple times already. So what kind of treatments have you gone through? Well, I don't know what they call it these days, but uh, one, one uh, psychiatrist uh, thought that, uh, well, it's not shock therapy anymore, but maybe that I, I should uh, I guess Dick Cavett, who suffered from depression, had had the treatment. Uh, I wish I could think of what it's called now. It doesn't sound quite as frightening as shock therapy, but <laughs> essentially, it mm -hmm. still is that. It's just more focused to specific parts of the brain rather than just to, you know, uh, like an electric chair or something. You're <laughs> shaking all over. Yeah, that's a little different. But, uh, <laughs> I opted out against that. I have seizures once in a while and. And uh, I haven't had any lately. The medication has, has been good to control them, but oh, that's uh, good. Uh, I didn't want my brain scrambled any more than I might already be. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I have, you know, I've seen various psychiatrists throughout the years, and uh, some have been more beneficial than others. And then the cost uh, is an issue. Uh, even on a sliding scale, I was paying one psychiatrist eighty dollars a visit, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm on social security now, and uh, 
not selling much art, so I don't have, I, I, I have a hard time justifying the time, uh, uh, the money for the time. In other words, I, mm -hmm. on days I wasn't there, you know, I wasn't there in, in therapy. I had was somewhere else. It, I felt it was like a waste of time. Uh, and I eventually couldn't uh, continue to do it financially, but um, mm -hmm. you can get, you, you know, I suppose the two therapists were integral in, you know, keeping me from committing suicide after my wife died. Uh, I think that was a beneficial time. Of course, I was, they jacked me up with a lot of medication too, but uh, um, uh, sometimes I've had counselors that were more beneficial than psychiatrists. It's, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's different and uh, at this point in my life, I've got tired of telling my story, and uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking the time with me. <laughs> Thank you. Haven't wanted to uh, engage with another psychiatrist and having to go back from my childhood, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How my mother fucked me up. <laughs> you can only explain things so many times. And, yes, yeah. right. Yeah, and if I can't, you know, my life could be worse. I think the antidepressants are keeping me above, ahead above water. Uh, uh, and that's important because mm -hmm. uh, your hip goes below water, you're, <laughs> you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. Get, seek the help you need. Uh, I think Southeast uh, organization with has the Fresh Air Gallery for Artists is a, a is a good resource for mental health care and mm -hmm. uh, for artists to go to uh, who have addictions or mental health issues. Uh, they will give you a show, review your work. And I don't know if everyone gets a show or not, but uh, I've shown there, and I know they have shows every every month. And their auction is coming up. Please attend. Uh, <laughs> I'll include links below. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I'm. It's pretty much just me right now, and the medication and uh, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, and I have a friend. Uh, close friend I confide into and, you know, talk with. And, uh, it helps to have somebody to talk to. Uh, they don't have to, you know, you don't have to be paying them $100 an hour even though they, <laughs> they're trained and, mm -hmm. and, and their training is important. Uh, uh, I think just getting it out there with another person you trust uh, and, don't, and uh, can not feel vulnerable with them. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, you know, that's very beneficial. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know talking with my friends has helped, and it's been a couple of years since I've been to, since I've seen a psychologist, and I really should go back. But like you said, it's the, the time and money, and yeah. so medication has been keeping me at least head above water right. and enough to be able to focus and do work and be a functioning member of society. Right. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, and I, I've heard some wonderful things about the a lot of the um, um, what's the word <laughs> services here in Central Ohio in particular. Mm -hmm. um, not I uh, interviewed. I have a bunch of um, LGBTQ friends that have recommended Equitas and Stonewall, mm -hmm. and then but hearing about Fresh Air is wonderful. I have heard of them in passing before, yes. so I'm definitely going to be more motivated to yeah, check, to cool. check out their well, shows. Uh, I think they're usually like in the afternoon, just about the time you get off, five to seven, I think usually their openings are. And perfect. And uh, <laughs> there are Long and uh, High Street on the uh, northwest corner. Oh, okay. Uh, just around, they're not the first building, I think they're like the second door in. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a nice space, and uh, Mike and Pullins has done a, a great job, along with Lauren Pond, who's the gallery director. Uh, They've been very supportive of me and giving me opportunities to show work. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I highly recommend it for anybody who's, who's an artist. To, uh, or you can go there for care, too. You, I, I haven't done use, I don't know what the process is for that, but I think uh, you know, they, they treat people. They must have a staff for psychologists or psychiatrists. And, mm -hmm. uh, maybe groups, I don't know. Well, I think you answered all of my questions. <laughs> that was actually really enlightening. I I learned a lot. Um, so tell us where we can find more about you. You're obviously in 400 West Rich. So. Yes, I'm, I'm a little remiss about uh, 
coming to their Frankfurt and Fridays, uh, uh, I never had much. I, I paint large, and I, I don't have uh, Frankfurt and Fridays. I think it's kind of a cash and carry, you know, something mm -hmm. small that they can walk out with rather than uh, one of my paintings. I have. I did go to Frankfurt and Fridays for a while, and they. Uh, I did get a sale from someone who had seen one of my pieces on the wall. They came back a month or two later. Oh, that's awesome. But, so it's possible. Um, <laughs> it's just not frequent. Uh, yeah. You meet some interesting people, but mm -hmm. uh, it just doesn't work well for me because of my scale and uh, uh, price. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, do you have a website, too? I have, do have a website, uh, www.michaeljhalliday.com. Perfect. And, again, and I think links. you can Google my name, and uh, oddly <laughs> enough, I didn't come up on that. Mm -hmm. it seems strange. Uh, <laughs> that means you're you're good with your search engine optimization. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 um, okay, well, I think that's it. So thank you again for joining me. I know it's not easy telling your story all the time, so well, I appreciate you taking the time yeah, with me. It'll be interesting if I get to see this at some point. <laughs> I hope you can. I'm very shy about seeing myself. Uh, speak or talk uh, i mean i am too one of, i'm honestly one of my goals is to like give a, a ted talk or like a presentation at a conference sometime mm -hmm. so I, even when i'm going back and editing i don't like the sound of my own voice i don't <laughs> I put earbuds in just so nobody else can hear so right. i if i can do it i have faith in you so um well, thank you ellie I, I think this is important work you're doing and thank you that will help other people who are suffering uh, with anxiety or depression or or even addiction uh, mm -hmm. um there are resources out there to help you. Uh, mm -hmm. I went through AA myself, and uh, um, having self starting to self medicate when I was 18 years old with alcohol, uh, uh, you know, it's, I was an alcoholic almost immediately. Uh, it just felt mm -hmm. so good to be a little out of control and not right. not having the answer to anyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And then it comes back and yes. <laughs> has a real downside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Unfortunately, my family's familiar with the addiction. So no. yeah. not a fun time. So no. I am, I understand. Completely. That was a little addendum anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but it leads me to my, my other point that um, just my disclaimer that we are not uh, mental health professionals. Please go seek the help that you need, whether it's therapy, whether it's uh, medication, whatever you might need. So, Thank you guys again for joining us for another episode. I've got some awesome guests coming up, so I'll go stick around. Thanks so much. Bye.